Um, hello, everyone. I'm T.Y. from Google Brain, and the work is done at Facebook AI Research with uh, Priya Goya, uh, Ross Gershik, Kai Ming He, he and Peter Dollar. Um, so before I introduce focal loss for dense object detection, I want to mention Viola and Jones object detector. I think it is one of the best uh, object detector design, in my opinion. The design is simple and efficient, and, and the detector look over all possible bug locations that could potentially contain target objects in an image, and just simply cl uh, try to cl uh, classify each box. And this type of sliding window detector can be run very efficiently through convolutional operation. And even earlier than Viola Jones, people have started to study how to implement sliding window detections with convolutional neural nets. However, in recent years, the two stage detectors, such as RCNN families, show strong performance in terms of detection accuracy. Uh, the, uh, the RCNN based methods have won past COCO competitions. Um, the two stage detector, uh, it, do, it does not just use sliding window detection. Instead, the system consists of two. Uh, two components. The first component is object proposal component, and the second component is to, cl to classify the sparse set of proposals. Uh, on the other hand, there are concurrent work um, for one stage detectors, such as uh, YOLO and, and SSD. And, uh, the, and uh, YOLO and SSD, they, they, they basically run something similar like a sliding window detection uh, on a densely populated grid. Uh, the one-stage detector shows very promising results in terms of speed, but it's typically, it is typically short for accuracy. Um, so if we compare one-stage and two-stage detector now, nowadays, people tend to think one-stage detector is fast, is simple, whereas uh, two-stage detectors are more accurate. And in fact, at CVPR um, 2017, Juan and O, they conducted a very extensive analysis on speed and accuracy trade-off with multiple different object detection methods. And it, show, it shows that for a high accuracy region, which is on the top right of the figure, uh, they, uh, they are usually with models um, based on two-stage detectors, such as fast RCNN. On the contrary, the high-speed region, which is on the bottom left of the figures, um, there, are, there are models based on uh, the SSD uh, methods. So, in this work, we try to answer the, the question, why one stage detector is now typically short for accuracy, but, it's, but it can run faster. Um, could we design a one stage detector that is fast and accurate uh, compared to the current uh, two stage detector? And uh, we found one important thing is that we really want to go toward more dense object detection, and typically, one stage detectors obtain better performance when it has more, more, uh, more bounding boxes to better cover the space of possible objects. We found that we're able to recover the accuracy by densely covering the space of uh, all, possible, uh, all possible locations that could contain objects. And typically, we need 100,000 boxes, which is a lot more uh, compared, to ex compared to existing one stage detector. And these cause a major problem. Um, the, ma the, major, the, the major issue here is that the, the imbalance uh, data distribution for foreground and, be and background examples. So on average, there are only seven objects in uh, one COCO image, whereas um, we have 100K uh, boxes location, right? So most uh, boxes are from background uh, examples. And um, some of the background examples, uh, which are difficult to recognize, they, they, they could provide very informative turning signal. However, most background examples, they are easy and uninformative. And, and, and due to the large number of easy examples, it might, it might, actually, um, it might actually fail the training process. So, we identify loss function is the main reason that large number of easy examples can distract training. Uh, cross entropy is a very commonly used loss function for both one stage and two stage detector. So the figure shows here, uh, uh, so the figure shows the function of loss. 
to how well the example is classified to its correct class. So on the right side of the figure, the examples are more correctly uh, um, being, uh, being classified and have lower losses. Um, and on the right side, uh, on the left side, the examples are, are more difficult and hard to classify. So I want to give you a, a quantitative example. Um, an easy example with probability 0.9 to be the right class, it generates 0.1 loss during training. And for a difficult example, wh which with uh, probability 0.1 to be, the, to be the right class, which is a point on, on the left, um, it generates 2.3 loss, uh, which is 20 times uh, bigger compared to the loss um, of easy example. And it sounds everything makes sense, right? right? Because we want, to we want to penalize the example that's wrongly uh, classified during training. But when we consider our dense detection setting, under the dense detection setting, the number of easy and hard examples are extremely imbalanced. So it's, it's likely there are 100,000 easy examples, but only 100 hard examples. So in that case, the total loss of easy examples are way bigger compared to the hard examples. This is distracting because hard examples contain more informative signal, and the signal is very likely to be overwhelmed by the loss generated from the easy examples. Um, so our idea to address the issue is to design a, mo a modulated function which reduces the loss for, for easy examples more compared to the um, more, uh, whereas keep the loss of four hard examples. Um, we add the modulated function, which is a very simple one minus p to uh, gamma term to modify the cross entropy function to achieve our goal. So in the figure here, we show focal loss. Uh, we show focal loss, uh, which is um, the loss we propose. Uh, it reduces the loss by ten times for easy examples, whereas the loss for the hard example is hard is hardly changed. Okay. Um, so we show that by controlling the parameters gamma, um, one could decide how much the focal loss is going to focus on hard examples. When gamma is zero, focal loss falls back to uh, the, the standard cross entropy. With larger gamma, uh, the loss function focuses more on hard examples. Okay, uh, we also introduce another parameter alpha which represents the prior distribution of foreground and background classes. Um, so the alpha parameter is simply weights the example in foreground and background in a different way. To construct the one-stage detector, we use feature pyramid network, uh, which just introduced um, in the Matt's RCNN uh, uh, pre uh, presentation. And we showed it is a very generic feature extractor, and we proved it can be used for many object detection um, algorithms. Um, so here we propose um, the retina net model, uh, which basically use FPN as a feature extractors and have very dense uh, boxes. We have a, a 100K uh, box locations uh, for retina net, and we, we use focal loss to train the model. Um, so, when, so with a trained retina net model, we would like to know the loss distribution under focal loss. So we sorted the focal loss on a collection of background examples and plot the cumulative normalized loss distribution. So the, so the purple curve is focal loss with gamma equal to two, which uh, focal loss try to focus more on the hard examples. And, um, and we show that for purple cur curve, there's only a very small fraction of background examples have high loss. So most of background example uh, when we use like focal loss, it doesn't, uh, it, it, it only generates very small, uh, lo small losses. Uh, whereas with lower, ga with lower uh, gamma, uh, most negative examples contribute some non-negligible uh, non, uh, non amount of loss. Uh, so this empirical uh, study supports our assumption that most background examples are easy 
and vocal loss can, effect, can, can effectively focus on the hard examples which contain uh, the information we want for training. And unlike the background boxes, the, for, the, foreground, the foreground boxes, they typically are hard examples. So applying focal loss does not change the, the distribution by much. Uh, we perform ablation study with retina net model. One baseline to compare is, um, is retina net better than, uh, sorry, is focal loss better than cross entropy? So we showed that focal loss is better than the best alpha balance cro uh, cross entropy by 2.3 AP on COCO data set. The second baseline we want to figure out is that is focal loss performs better compared to uh, some, sam some subsampling strategy like online harnack and mining. Uh, and we show that focal loss outperforms uh, OHAN, for example, for online harnack and mining out, uh, algorithms by 2.3 AP on COCO data sets. So, la so la um, in the last, we obtained the speed and accuracy curve of retina net model by controlling the input image resolution and the capacity of backbone model. Um, by the time of submission, retina net obtains the, the upper curve compared to existing one stage and two stage methods. So to summarize, uh, in this work, we identify class imbalance is a major issue for training dense one-stage detector, and we propose focal loss to address the class imbalance issue, and we achieve the state of our um, accuracy and speed um, for object detectors. Thank you. There is time for questions. So now, how do you compare uh, mask RCNN with this new method? What is best? Yeah, so that is the exact question uh, we, we expect before our presentation. Um, <laughs> so for retina net, now, now we only do that for box detection. So we haven't extended to mask um, and like key points. So that's major difference. And uh, for bus, for box detection, the retina net have comparable performance compared to mass RCNN. Thank you. Any other question? Well, let's thank the speaker.